So this is our second video on congruent triangle proofs. So in the first video, we kept it pretty simple. It was mostly four-step proofs. So today we're going to look at some five-step proofs. We're going to look at some different reasons we know things are congruent and how we would put them into our congruent triangle proofs. So let's take a look at this first example. Uh, notice we're trying to prove that the two triangles are congruent. Prove PQS is congruent to triangle QRT. And then notice our given statement. So we've got two segments that they've actually, or two sides, sets of sides they've already actually put on here. And then they've also told us uh, that Q is the midpoint of PR. So let's go ahead, as always, let's start with our given statement. So I know that PS is congruent to QT. And that's given. I also happen to know that um, QS is congruent to RT. And that's also given. All right, so hopefully that's making sense so far. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our third statement. Now, if you put this statement first, that's totally fine. The reason I saved it for last is that we're going to have to do some more work with this statement. This doesn't necessarily give us, it, we have to do more than just one step on this in order to get a piece that's useful for our congruent triangles. So, so far they've marked the sides for us. We've got a side and a side. Now we also know, we'll put this step in here because it's given to us. Q um, is the midpoint. of PR. All right. So Q is the midpoint of PR, and that is also given. All right. Now, in the past, after our three statements, we go ahead and we say how our triangles are congruent. We're not going to do that yet. Okay, we know Q is the midpoint of PR. Now, that needs to either help us find a side or an angle. Now, if Q is right in the middle of PR, what do I know about PQ and RQ? Well, I should know that PQ and RQ are the same size, right? They're the same size because Q is right in the middle. So the two halves, should, it should split it into two equal halves. So now PQ is congruent to RQ. Or actually, I should probably say, um, let's see if I can, oh, okay, very good. Um, that's fine, I'll just leave it. I should actually say QR because Q matches with angle P, um, but that's my mistake. All right, so PQ is congruent to RQ. Well, how do I know that? Um, I know that because it's the, um, I'll type this out so it's a little cleaner, um, definition of midpoint. Okay, that's why I know that um, PQ is congruent to RQ. So this is a new thing. So in the past, we just looked at given reflexive vertical, right? Those were our three. We're going to add three more today, three more reasons. Now, there are actually anything you know in math that causes two things to be the same size is actually fair game in proofs. In fact, you could add any mathematical step you wanted. But we're going to kind of start from the beginning. We're going to kind of build ourselves up so we have some confidence moving forward. So we started with vertical reflexive given. We're going to add definition of midpoint, definition of bisector, um, and then alternate interior angles. So we have definition of midpoint. So that tells me that these sides are congruent. And then how do I know that triangle PQS is congruent to triangle QRT? Okay. And I know that by S, S, S. And we're done with our proof. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, let's move on to the next one. We're going to do two more proofs here. We'll, we'll pick up the pace a little bit if you feel like this is dragging. Um, so once again, let's start here. We're trying to prove some triangles congruent. And then we're going to go ahead and list our statements. So I know for sure angle B is congruent to angle D. And I like to list the ones that are like angles or sides because I won't have to do any more work with them. So given, I also know that uh, um, AE bisects BD, and that's also given. 
Let's keep going forward with this AE bisecting BD. Now, this is kind of important, okay? With midpoint, it's pretty obvious. If it's the midpoint of something, you're gonna split that thing in half. When we get into bisects, how do we know? We, we should get a feel that we're probably dealing with sides, right? We're sides or crossing sides. What does this word bisect mean? Remember, it means to cut in half. So it's very similar to midpoint. It's not a midpoint, it bisects. We're not gonna use definition of midpoint here. So notice which side is it? See if you can figure this out. Is it AE that's getting cut in half or BD that's getting cut in half? Well, if we look at this, we should see AE bisects where it cuts BD in half. So the two pieces, I know this angle and this angle, right? The two pieces I know for sure are congruent is BC and DC. I don't know that AC and EC are congruent. I don't know that because they're not being cut in half. Now, if it said they bisect each other, then I know both sets, but it just says that it bisects one of the lines. So it means it cuts it in half. So I can say from this BC is congruent to DC. And that's by definition of bisect or definition of bisection, if you went to that. But the definition of bisect means it's cutting it into equal pieces, okay? So that's our second new one here. Now, I only have an angle and a side, so I don't have this thing done yet. What else could I do to find an angle or a side? Well, we should hopefully have recognized that we still have vertical angles and reflexive sides. Even though we're adding new pieces here, we still have the old ones to keep track of. So I'm gonna add angle um, ACB, remember we need three letters for vertical angles because those angles could be anything. Anytime we have multiple angles coming from the same vertex, we need to use three letters. So ACB is congruent to angle um, ECD. And that is because they are vertical angles. All right. So now I have all of my stuff. Notice the side, it is included between my two angles. It's kind of trapped between my two angles. So this is going to be angle side angle, right? And then we're just going to go ahead and put our proof statement. So we end up with um, triangle ABC is congruent and A matches with E, B matches with D, C matches with C. So that all checks out. EDC. And there's our proof. So notice here we took five steps to get to our congruent, uh, congruent triangles and that's because we have this bisect. It gives us helpful information but we still need a statement saying that the two sides are congruent. You can't just assume that in your proof. Alright, last one. So this video is not too long. Let's, uh, let's knock this one out. So first thing I know, I know that angle QPS is congruent to angle RSP and that is given. All right, let's go ahead and mark those angles. QPS, remember when we're talking about three angles, it's always the middle letter that's our vertex. QPS is this angle here. RSP is this angle here. All right, next thing we gotta do, we've gotta put, give our other um, statement, so PR. Now what does these double lines, you sometimes they're slanted, sometimes they're vertical. What do those double lines mean? Hopefully you remember, that means that they are parallel. So it's saying that PR and QS are parallel. And it's also, let's again, let's use this given statement here. All right, so notice the arrows on my, um, on my lines. Remember those also mean parallel. Now, here's an important question. If they are parallel, does it mean does it does it mean they have to be congruent? If they're parallel, does it mean they have to be congruent? Hopefully you answer no. Parallel just means they're going in the same direction. It does not mean they have to be the same length. So I cannot, this is really important, I cannot say that PR is congruent to QS. I can say they're parallel, I can't say they're congruent. What I can say what do we do when we have parallel lines and we have a transversal cutting through, kind of like PS cutting through those parallel lines? I should recognize that I have an angle pair here. And that angle pair, let me clean this guy up so that way we don't get confused. Okay, let me do this um, with actually a different color so we can pay attention to the difference. 
that angle pair is alternate interior angles. Okay, if I kind of sketch this out, okay, like this, it's this angle and that angle. And this is why it's important to know our angle pairs because sometimes it's not alternate interior angles. There's other, other angle pairs that we run into here with congruent triangles. Okay, this is a pair of alternate interior angles. So why do I know that angle QSP is congruent to angle um, RPS? I know it because they're alternate interior angles. I'll say AIA. I think on the form it, it has it typed out. Um, all right, so that gives me another angle. So I've got two sets of angles. I look for vertical angles. I don't have any. I have to look for reflexive sides. I do have a pair, uh, a reflexive side. I've got PS, and notice uh, PS matches with SP, is congruent to SP. And that's reflexive. All right, my final step here, I'm gonna give my given statement, or my uh, proof statement, PQS. I'm gonna get the Q in there. It is congruent to S, R, and P. How do I know these triangles are congruent? I know they're congruent by angle, side, angle. Okay, and notice the side, once again, is included in between my two angles. If the side was like P, Q, and R, S, it'd be angle, angle, side. All right, so that wraps up our proofs for this lesson. Once again, you have a Google form. Now, in the Google form, I'm gonna give you more options. I'm gonna give you more statement options. I'm gonna give you more reason options, all right? So pay attention, pay attention to the letters. Don't let it overwhelm you. But I, again, you're filling in blanks, so you don't need to do the whole proof by yourself. There's gonna be a few more blanks blanks than this one than the last one. Uh, but again, we want to start building this process out so we can see where the pieces go. And once again, shoot for, for accuracy here. Um, I'll be kind of generous with the grading scale, but I still want you to do well and to prove that you're doing it. Especially today, yesterday you had three proofs, today you have four proofs, um, but they really shouldn't take that long. As always, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email. So um, let me know how it goes. Hopefully uh, this works out well for you.